Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gatos, joining you for case discussion number 35. So before we get started, let me ask you to please join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NTEX RN application and review to 500 nurses. We've increased it from our initial 100 nurses um, annually. This time around, we'd like to help 500 nurses for this year. So to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. And if you share this video to at least 10 of your friends, we will pray for your success. Thank you very much for doing that in advance. So before we get to start, let's say congratulations to Everlyn F.G. Natividad, USRN from Emilio Aguinaldo College, Manila, who passed the Next Generation NTLEX RN for the State Board of New York last February 10, 2025. That's just a couple of days ago. And let's learn from her success story. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Ray, who was instrumental in my success. I'm so thrilled to have passed the NCLEX, and I know I couldn't have done it without the wonderful people and resources that RAGRS provided. Dr. Ray, you rock. Thank you very much for the very kind words, Natty. You are a blessing to us Filipino nurses. I'm forever grateful. Ray Gapos, baby from PNLE up to the NCLEX. Wow, you're a loyalty awardee. I was so impressed by the expertise and generosity of everyone. I especially appreciate every mentor, Dr. Ray, Ms. Che, Ms. Nicole, Ms. Saul, Ms. Missy, Sir Joshua, Ms. Tarlene, and Ms. McLean for their willingness to spend extra time explaining the complex concepts we encountered. The study materials provided were incredibly helpful and comprehensive. The supportive and encouraging environment during my quick fix sessions last January truly fostered my learning and helped me build the confidence I needed to succeed. Our AGRS itself was invaluable in preparing me for the exam. And this is where she mentioned the program she took with us. The very organized handouts, thank you, Core Shell, TOP, that's the test overview program, NCLEX 311, read this three times. So that's her tip. And the pharmacology book were well structured and covered all the essential topics. The three day quick fix session was gold. Let me repeat that. The three day quick fix session was gold. Every NCLEX taker should not miss it. You'll learn a lot in just three days. Even the YouTube case studies were particularly beneficial. I feel that the knowledge and skills I gained through this program will not only serve me well in my future endeavors, but also significantly enrich my understanding of nursing. I definitely enjoyed every minute of studying. I never felt burdened that I needed to answer or read something. I found the whole process so fun. Lagi ako excited arali ng mga lessons. RAGRS made me master the concepts without memorizing them. So let me repeat that again. RAGRS made me master the concepts without memorizing them. And that's through our very unique functional concepts method. Instead, I learned them by heart. Thank you for the dedication and commitment to all the people involved from the IT staff, Ms. Joanne, of course, our manager, and all the staff in the Manila office. They felt like family. Every single one of them definitely rooting for us. The warmth in the Manila office and the unlimited food during Quick Fix were the best. It never felt more like home for a review center. So I tops Gapus, that's the processing arm of the Regapus system. If you process your papers or application through ITAPS, then you get a free review program from us. They never hesitated to assist me and they didn't disappoint. It was a smooth and stress-free process, the best decision I ever made. I will forever be grateful to Dr. Ray and the RAGRS team, to my family, Jeric and Theon, for putting up with me during my review. I had to cancel most of our outings just to study and be away most of the time because I needed alone time to read. Every bit of sacrifice was worth it. To my nephew Red for being my runner whenever I needed to send or get a document to or from school. To my sisters Ati G, Amard, and Ati Love. And to my HK Carrizo family for helping and cheering me on. To my CI friend, the mother of my daughter, and the person who never doubted me, Ma'am M, you're always a blessing to me. Mapa, para sa inyo to, thank you, thank you, and thank you. That's from Ms. Evelyn F. G. Natividad, USRN from Emilio Aguinaldo College, Manila. Now, she processed her application through ITAPS Gapus. Let me share with you 
this wonderful news. We have a promo. You can get a free review from us if your processor entrants are in application with ITAPS GAPOS because our application packages begin at a very affordable rate of 45,000 pesos only. Now, we also have here Sir Ian Ezekiel Seno from Bicol, who also processed with ITAPS, and this is what he says. I express my gratitude for the divine guidance throughout my NCLEX review and examination process. My sister referred me to ITAPS for NCLEX exam processing. I completed a complimentary review course offered by RAGRS, attending night classes from August 7, 7.15 to 9.15 p.m., concluding in November. Due to my employment, I occasionally fell behind, consistently requesting replays via our group chat. I completed the examination on January 16th at 7 a.m., requiring over two hours and 15 minutes. My prayer to complete the exam with 85 questions was answered, although the exam's adaptive algorithm presented challenges, including a four or five case studies. I reviewed the 311th edition textbook and pharmacology book several days prior to the examination. I offer my sincere thanks to God, my family for their unwavering support, and RGRS providing effective NGN question answering techniques. Thank you so much. So for those of you who are a little bit tight on their budget, you can get a free review from the Ray Agapus Review System if you process with ITAPS. So I'd also like to read this advisory, Dr. Ray Agapos, that's me. And the mentors of the Ray Agapos review system are not part of another review named Gapos Review Academy. We, we are not in any way connected to that entity. And let's move on now to our next generation NCLEX RN case number 35. And we're going to talk about Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Now, what should come to mind when you see Rocky Mountain spotted fever, um, two things. One, that this is usually manifested by rashes. And two, just like your Lyme disease, this is transmitted to humans through your tick bites. Okay, so before we talk more of that, let me just share with you the good news. A 66-year-old passed the NGN through our system last December 2, 2024. She's the oldest we've got so far. And she broke the record of um, Jane Sa um, Sereno, who passed at age 60. And of course, Nanay Pasita Reville, who, who passed the NGN at age 61. And Mom Flor Pangilinan Villarreal passed the NGN at age 66. Okay, now back to Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever or RMSF. It is a bacterial disease. It's, it's actually caused by Ericetia that spread to humans by um, ticks. So you have your wood ticks, that's your Dermacentor andersoni, American dog ticks, that's your Dermacentor variabilis, and or your brown ticks. So these ticks are the ones that would transmit your Ericetia bacteria to human beings and that could potentially develop into your Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. So a common sign of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is a rash, but before the rash, there's usually fever for two to five days. And then um, the rash appears. Initially, it will be non-itchy, it's flat, and there will be red blotches or pinpoint dots that develops into eventually your bluish or purplish petechial rash with a centripetal pattern on the sixth day. What do we mean by centripetal pattern? It begins on the distal part of the extremities moving towards the center of the body or the trunk. So from the distal part moving towards the center of the body, that's your centripetal pattern of presentation of the rashes in a client with Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Now, Pay particular attention to the fact that RMSF is spread through tick bites. So you may want to assess if the client who is manifesting rushes and fever could have gone through areas where they could have been exposed to ticks, wood ticks, or American dog ticks. And that would definitely help in the diagnosis of the client. So there are three common manifestations of RMSF, and these are your FRH, father H fever, rush, and headache. Now, how do we know that this is Rocky Mountain spotted fever? First 
focus on the characteristics of the rash. So to differentiate it from Lyme disease, in Lyme disease, you have bullseye rash or rounded rings of rash. Here in RMSF, you have flat rashes that eventually becomes petechial. Now to compare it in terms of the pattern of the uh, occurrence of the rashes, in clients with mesos, they would usually have rashes that begin on the scalp and at the back of the ear, and then it spreads moving down to the trunk. In German mesos, the rashes usually begin on the face and then spreads to the trunk. So those are um, cephalocaudal in terms of distribution. So from head going down for both missiles and German missiles. For Lyme disease, it's usually rounded. And for Rocky Mountain spotted fever, centripetal, meaning from the distal part of the body, the arms and the legs, moving towards the trunk. Okay. And then your RMSF also comes with headache. Now, the other manifestations in, aside from your rush would be muscle pain, stomach pain, um, and of course, the lack of appetite. Now, remember once again the code RMSF to summarize the symptoms, rush, muscle pain, stomach pain, fever, headache, and lack of appetite. Sometimes it could be to vomiting. Now, there's no vaccine for your RMSF, unlike in Lyme disease, where the vaccine was actually, um, eventually, it was um, taken out of the market because of very poor demand, primarily because your Lyme disease can be treated with oral antibiotics. So it's in the um, mid-2000s, okay? I think it was 2005 when the vaccine for Lyme disease was withdrawn from the market. For RMSF or your Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, there's no vaccine. So RMSF is treated with doxycycline, which is an antibiotic. And like your tetracycline, doxycycline has the potential to stain the teeth. And if you may want to instruct your patient to uh, minimize the staining, they can use special toothpaste that could lighten up the staining once it develops for uh, clients or taking your doxycycline. Now, what are the common complications of Rocky Mountain spotted fever? We have damage to blood vessels, hearing loss, and mental disability. The most severe among these three would be the damage to blood vessels. That could potentially lead to amputation if it's not properly treated. So RMSF, therefore, is potentially fatal. Now, before we use the concepts that we've just talked about in answering a specific case, let me just share with you the good feedback of those who are using my book, NPLEX RN311, the Next Generation Quick Fix Edition. And I asked Mami L, binasa mo ba lahat? Did you read all three books? And she says, siguro di makapag-decide yung computer kung ipapasa ko. Hindi, pasado ka talaga. Di ko na nabasa mostly yung pharmacology book at NRS. Nag-concentrate lang po ako sa 311. 30 minutes before my test, I was still in the car. Nagbabasa pa po ako ng 311 book. Ka-stress talaga, but I made it. Thanks a bunch to you talaga, sir. You're really an inspiration. I said, thank you. And she says, love you, sir Ray. Hope to see you pag uwi ko ulit next year. Okay. And of course, here at the Ray Gapos Review System, we will be utilizing our own technology. We don't adapt. Western tools because it's not effective for Easterners like us. That's why those of you are using Western tools, no, that's not the kind of tool that you should be using if you want to pass NGN in your first try. So here at the Ray Gapos Review System, our learning tools are published by world-renowned publishers. We have our own learning management system that are updated frequently to reflect the trends. And if you would notice, we have covered all the concepts, the main subject areas, on the NGN, as evidenced by what I'm presenting here. We have um, parts of our course on safety and infection control, basic care and comfort, health promotion, maintenance, management of care. And of course, we're proud here at the Ray Gapo system that we have a very conducive environment. This is where we usually do our quick fix. If you would notice, we have a limited number of seats and that's because we wanted to maintain our students' comfort in fully air-conditioned rooms. And this is our main hall here at the fourth floor of the Ray Gapus building. I hope you get to experience the kind of learning environment we have. And of course, we 
pride ourselves okay in providing a comfortable venue of course we're so proud of our comfort rooms that are very very well maintained for our nurses and of course we have an area that's um being also used as a lounge for our students during their break time and if you may want to avail of our NTLEX R in Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NTLEX RN, your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, QBank plus the three books, the fee starts at 3,499. Plus you get to attend my quick fix sessions and the NGN strategies with me. So here we go. Here's case number 35. After a hiking in April, 21 year old male develops fever. Now, the first sentence alone gives you a lot of clue. Hiking is an outdoor activity. Now, the time from March to August to September is usually the time in which the ticks are active because the temperature would allow them to be a little more mobile. So it's no longer winter. And um, you have there the presenting symptom fever. That simply means there could be an infection that could have developed. And then he was tested for Lyme disease, but the results were negative. So this would tell you that this could not be Lyme. But let me also uh, highlight the fact that your screening test for Lyme disease is not 100% accurate. And then he soon develops pinpoint rushes that started on his left leg. The nurse should anticipate treatment protocols related to which possible Diagnosis. Now, remember in Rocky Mountain spotted fever, the rashes initially um, present as flat and then um, they could appear blotchy and then eventually pinpoint and petechial. So the nurse should anticipate treatment protocols related to which possible diagnosis were in missiles. Um, usually, the distribution of rash would be cephalocaudal, meaning from the head going down to the trunk, the same is true with German missiles. The difference is in missiles, usually um, it begins from the hairline or behind the ear to the face down to the trunk. German missiles begins from the face down to the trunk. For bacterial meningitis, even if the rashes could be petechial, usually meningi um, bacterial meningitis also presents with signs of meningeal irritation like nuchal rigidity, your Brudzinski sign and your Kernig sign. And those are not necessarily present in Rocky Mountain spotted fever. So by eliminating the first three diagnoses, namely missiles, German missiles, and bacterial meningitis, this is a clear case of number four, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. So join our hundreds of thousands of pastors from more than 36 countries where the Regapo system now is being used and be the next MGN passer. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapus at your service. For those who are about to take your test, good luck and God bless. And for those who are still thinking of how they should prepare for MGN, you want to crack it at 85 questions on your first try, join us. See you in our next video.